Ladies and gentlemen, Sony are being sued 5 million US dollars in a class action lawsuit due to the resolution of Killzone Shadow Falls multiplayer. So the title is not actually 1080p and in this Red Game Nintendo video we're going to be discussing just that, what the lawsuit is actually claiming. It says and I quote, Sony claimed the PS4 was so powerful that it featured Killzone video game could display 1080p multiplayer graphics, a crowning achievement in the video game industry. However, after the game's release, gamers quickly noticed and complained that Killzone's multiplayer graphics were blurry to the point of distraction. The cause of the blurriness went unknown until a well-respected video games website reported that Killzone's multiplayer didn't actually provide 1080p graphics as advertised. So anyway, Eurogamer did some testing on this and basically found that it's actually running at 960 by 1080 with temporal upscale. And then Gorilla Games actually addressed this um, finally in a blog post. Um, it's a long story, but effectively they are calling the technique temporal reprojection. And this basically combines the pixels and vectors of multiple lower resolution frames, re lower resolution frames for the full 1080p image. The idea behind this is basically that let's say that you've got frame A, B, C. Um, what the game will do is use some of the information from frame A for frame B, and then some of the information from frame B to frame C, and so on. It's basically just to reduce the amount of information that the GPU has to process to keep the frame rate up. Regardless, Lador, who is once again the plaintiff, um, was not happy. He basically stated that Sony ensured the packaging for every retail copy of Killzone represented among the game's other consumer race uh, facing technical specifications, the resolution was an unqualified 1080p. Now, while I agree with that, he says, um, remembering his own packaging, did say the same thing. And to be fair, Gorilla did state that the game would be 1080p. This is the part, the point, however, where I'm not exactly sure. Um, he stated that after opening the Killzone packaging, thus rendering the title unreturnable when playing the game, he realised the multiplayer graphics were not 1080p, and indeed noticed they were blurry and did not appear to be rendering natively at 1080p. Had the plaintiff known that Killzone's multiplayer was not running the graphics resolution of 1080p, I'm going to get real sick of saying that word in a moment, he would not have purchased Killzone at all or would have paid substantially less for it. Now, this is not the first time that this law firm has actually taken action against gaming industry giants. So, Sony are not the first victims, if you will. Edelson have previously taken action against EA. That was in regards to free digital copies of Battlefield 1943 when you purchased Battlefield 3. And in addition to that, you remember the awesome quality that was Colonial Marines? No, I don't think anyone remembers that because it didn't happen. Well, there was a lawsuit against not only Sega but also Gearbox as well because the game was a horrible mess, to be frank. And indeed, in the original documents for this, it actually mentions multiple times about the whole battle for 1080p, um, which both the Xbox One and the PS4 are doing. In fact, it says, uh, part 217, Sony and Microsoft have battled for video games' attention for more than a decade, and all signs indicated the next generation of gaming, marked by the release of PS4 and Xbox One, will continue to trend. One popular technology put it, it's the war of dominance of eight generation console will soon be on the Xbox One and PS4 will be in store and unleashing the hotly contested battle amongst the firms. Naturally, the console, the focus on the console battle is resting on the console's respective performance amongst video gamers and gamers industry known as resolution it is a leading indicator of video game and console performance now it does go on to then state what resolution is but i've done large videos on that before so i'm not going to um waste loads of time discussing how resolution works if you need more information on that just uh google what is resolution on the channel and you come up with a pretty downright informative video. I'll also remember to link it in the description. So here's the thing. 
While I do think it's a little far-fetched to say that you wouldn't pay as much money for 1080p, um, the bottom line is, Sony and Gorilla left themselves open to this. <laughs> as much as I, as much as I don't necessarily agree with suing them, the fact of the matter is, I also can't feel like bad for them, because this is a symptom of the video gaming industry. This is exactly what I was say stating yesterday about pre-ordering. You get these bull shots, you get these trailers, and you effectively get marketing where you're not actually sure if it's true. I mean, there was a large amount of argument um, surrounding the whole Killzone situation. I personally really didn't bother with the whole multiplayer side of things, but there was a massive, massive, massive debate um, when Temporal Projection was actually first announced. Um, there were basically, you know... Um, arguing, well, yeah, it is 1080p images. Other people were stating, well, it's not really, because you're basically reusing half the image data from the previous image, so you're only rendering effectively 50%. And, and this is this is the same issue even with the order, um, 1886, where um, Radio Dawn is stating, yeah, it's 1080p, but with huge borders. So it's like, the fact of the matter is, if you're going to be somewhat dishonest to be totally blunt you're gonna be leaving yourself open to these types of lawsuits because people look for any excuse and let's just be totally and utterly honest here shadowfall even using temporal reprojection did not manage to maintain 60 frames a second in multiplayer um, there were multiple issues with slowdown. And by the way, this also was an occurrence in the single player mode as well. Um, the you know, there was quite a few frame rate drops, which isn't a big deal. You can effectively lock it to 30 FPS, but even so, it's not exactly what you'd want, is it? It's like if you're advertising the game at 1080p, ugh. and here's the point, another major point as well. 1080p multiplayer graphics is considered a crowning achievement in video game industry. There's so many different issues with that statement. I don't necessarily feel that a resolution should be what is the achievement. What about gameplay? What about actual overall graphical effects? What about a frame rate that's not 3 frames a second? Oh, I'm sorry, 30 frames a second. All of these are major issues, and when is 1080p that bloody impressive? I know I'm going to get the usual comments of, well, yeah, you're talking about PC, but the fact of the matter is, 1080p has been, well, average for PCs in bloody ages, and everyone expected 1080p 60 for this generation of consoles. Whether you'd like to admit it, I expected 1080p 60 from vast majority of titles, and I'm not the only one. Um, there are tons of others, um, even... Guys such as Jim Sterling, Total Biscuit, Yahtzee, various other major industry um, analysts. Well, I wouldn't really call them analysts, but commentators have stated, look, we expected more than this. And the bottom line is, I'm genuinely surprised we've not actually had more incidents of major public outcries. I mean, to be honest, the whole Watch Dogs situation is a massive, massive, massive example of just bull. Because there were so many issues about, is it downgraded? No, it's not. Yes, it is. No, it's not. Yes, it is. Look at this trailer. No, it's not. Look at this. And I honestly believe it doesn't take a proverbial genius. It doesn't take someone with the IQ of Einstein. It doesn't take someone with 2020 eyesight to be able to see Watch Dogs has had significant visual downgrades. And yes, you can blame it on the next generation console hardware, if you so wish. And yes, it is technically the console's fault. And yes, you can enable it on the PC, but that's not the point. That's not the issue. The platform and the Limitation of hardware shouldn't be the concern. The fact of the matter is, if you're advertising a game to look like something, then one of the bloody versions should look like that. I And I understand why Ubisoft didn't do it, because there would have been probably quite an outcry from console gamers if the PC version hadn't. But at least they could say that it wasn't visually downgraded. They could say, look, 
the you know the PS4 or the Xbox One or whatever could not handle this, and that's the bottom line. And I honestly feel that if they were more honest, if more if more companies were just blunt, if they just said, look, these are the technical limitations of the machine, but they're cheap. This is you know the company does not want to make a massive loss on each of the pieces of hardware. The console, you're getting what you're paying for, but the gameplay is still awesome. I honestly think, yes, there'd be a bit of a public outcry at the start. Yes, you get the herp a derp for the first couple of months, but after, you know, a year or so, people would just be like, oh, okay, that's how it is, and there would be a, little, a lot less complaining, in my personal opinion. But when you're getting game engines, which are costing millions to develop, millions to add extra graphical fidelity in them and then you see that in a trailer and then that trailer then ends up being like do i believe that when you're seeing it at e3 when you're seeing it at gamescom and so on and so forth that's when the issues start to arise so while i don't necessarily agree with this chap uh, with douglas Lador, well i don't necessarily agree that you should pay less money for 1080p and obviously they're just saying that for the sake of the lawsuit because you wouldn't exactly say well I would have bought it bloody anyway because you're not that's not exactly the best way to win uh, a legal battle is it but at the same time simultaneously I find it really really hard to feel bad for Sony I feel really it's almost like well you kind of saw this coming I do I do feel the chap left it a little bit late I would have liked the lawsuit to have happened earlier when Killzone was still majorly relevant and you can be a Sony fan if you like um, but I think we can all agree that it's it's partially dishonest you can argue about the the technical aspects of this all day long you can argue that it is a real 1080p image others will say it's not personally personally if you're asking my personal opinion, I don't believe it is. I think it's a f clever way to um, pseudo-replicate 1080p. It's not genuine 1080p because it's effectively taking the positions of the previous frame and using them to basically make a guesswork of the next frame. And obviously, while that can be reasonable, it's not going to be 100% accurate. Hence, you get the blurring. So overall... My final closing thoughts on this. It's a little ridiculous to say you wouldn't have enjoyed the game as much. Um, and you wouldn't have paid as much money for it if it wasn't that resolution. But that is just kind of legalese. That's just how they have to do things. What I don't feel is ridiculous, however, is the fact that a company's basically been called out for this. And it's going to happen more. Because... The bottom line is, a couple of years ago, people were less tuned in on the whole resolution and frame rate debate. It's been a massive, massive, massive cause of contention in this generation. And the fact of the matter is, everyone's pointing at the Xbox One and saying, ha ha, you've got ESRAM, you've got lack of GPU power, but the PS4 is also having the same debates. And this is the whole focus of the video that I did the other day. Sure, the issues are less prevalent on the PS4 and the Xbox One, but the bottom line is, internally, there are questions that you can bet the studios are asking themselves when they're developing for the machine. They have to say to themselves, we can't use this version of lighting, or we can't use such high-resolution textures, or we have to lower the, I don't know, the draw distance here, or we can't use such high levels of anti-aliasing for the sake of frame rate and or resolution. And of course, we expect them to choose the most exciting sections of the level. I don't expect them to be showing, I don't know, the walking, talking parts of Gears of War. If it's a Gears of War trailer, I don't expect them to be walking in the five minutes in the trailer, talking, you know, where Dom's talking about his, um, his wife or whatever. But what I do expect is for what we see on the back of packaging to be relatively accurate. Oh, and by the way, I could also somewhat levy this against PC hardware as well. Um, I think one of the issues with PCs is that the minimum specifications or the box 
it says it requires X, whatever X is, so X amount of RAM, X amount of processing power, X amount of GPU, but it fails to qualify that with the resolution. So what are those minimum requirements? Are we 640 by 480 with no graphical effects whatsoever and it might as well have been made in MS Paint? Or are we talking about this is going to be running a 720p with minimal specifications? What about recommended? Is that going to be recommended at 1080p um, or 1440p? I feel that there should be a little bit of extra uh, information on there as well. Regardless, guys, this is a huge topic, and no doubt people are going to get a bit pissed off from either side of the fence on this one. But honestly, while I do feel that some of the aspects of the law of, of the uh, class action suit are a little ridiculous, the fact that he's going to say that he's going to pay less money for a game that's a lower resolution, and that's, that's a little weak. The fact of the matter is, you're leaving yourself open to these lawsuits when you're basically... What is effectively, many people would argue, not living up to the advertisement on the box or the trailer or whatever else, especially, and this is another major point, my final one, the Xbox One was heavily criticised at launch for the whole issues with Rise, with the downgrading and so on. And while the Xbox One's rise was supposed to showcase the power of the system, and this is the next generation, Killzone was supposed to do very similar for the PS4. Um, it was supposed to be a graphical showcase. Look what we could do. Look what the first generation of next generation gaming looks like. Look at what these early entries you know, managed to achieve. And the fact of the matter is... They advertise the game to be 1080p, which it is technically in single player, but the multiplayer it's not. So just be honest about that. Just say, you know, because of the extra chaos of multiplayer, you we're going to be running at lower resolution. And people might be a little bit disappointed, but it's better to show disappointment up front. And then, you know, they'd say, well, we can do better in the future. It's either time constraints or whatever bullcrap they want to make up. But at least be honest about the specs of the game initially. And then they don't leave themselves open to this. It's something. Anyway, guys, uh, sorry, this video turned out to be considerably lengthier than what I originally anticipated. But hopefully you've enjoyed it. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.